Hello, and welcome to the unboxing and mounting video for Anchor Solix X1. Please be advised that only properly trained technicians and certified installers are allowed to set up Anchor Solix X1. Refer to your safety instructions for more information. You can pause the screen at any time to review the information. Other important notes for you to know. Don't place modules in an area exposed to direct sunlight, fire, or explosive material. Make sure the installation location is protected from hazards, like floods. Move the package to the installation site and unbox it. Here's what you'll need to install Anchor Solix X1. Tools aren't provided by Anchor Solix. Here's what you'll find inside the power module box of Anchor Solix X1. Pause the screen if you need to see the dimensions. To lift the power module, use the left and right handles. There are two pairs. There are also two hooks on the back for mounting. Here's what you'll find inside the battery module box of Anchor Solex X1. Pause the screen if you need to see the dimensions. The battery module also has two pairs of left and right handles for you to lift it. There are also two hooks on the back for mounting. Here's what you'll find inside the backup controller box of Anchor Solix X1. On the backup controller, you'll see two latches on the side, four screw holes at the back, and knockouts on the bottom for cables. For specific measurements, please pause the screen. Decide whether you'll install X1 on the ground or wall. We'll show wall installation now. Before installing, find a suitable location. Take note of the clearance space needed to keep X1 away from nearby objects. Find the bracket studs and secure screws inside them. You have three options for screw hole spacing, 12 inches, 16 inches, or 20 inches. Mark an appropriate height to install the wall bracket. Put the base plate on the left and right brackets and secure with the M4 10 millimeter screws. Use a level to position the bracket backplate on the wall. Mark the holes. Use M870 millimeter screws to mount the brackets on the wall. Confirm the bracket is level. Align the positioning card with the top of the base. Make sure it adheres to both the wall and mount bracket. Align the positioning card's bottom holes with the marked points on the wall. Mark the holes for the second or third mount brackets. Continue marking all necessary holes before mounting the bracket on the wall. When you're ready to mount the brackets, you'll see there are three options for screw hole spacing. These are also 12 inches, 16 inches, or 20 inches. Align the marked holes with the appropriate slots on the mount bracket. Make sure the 30 millimeter side faces the bottom. Confirm the mount bracket is level. If not, adjust. Repeat these steps to install all of the wall mount brackets. Install the first battery onto the bracket. Secure it with the interlockers, aligning the battery with the base plate. Stack and lock the remaining batteries and power modules, then make sure they're aligned. Insert shims between the anti-tip bracket and the hook to prevent any wobbling. After installing, Check one more time that all modules are algined and are secured on the brackets. To install the backup controller, press down on the latch to open the door. Lift and remove the door. Unfasten the PM4 10mm screws to detach the inner panel. Keep the screws to reinstall. Remove the necessary cable knockouts on the bottom of the backup controller. You'll need to do this before installing the backup controller on the wall. Find an appropriate place to install the backup controller. Use a 16-inch screw hole distance and check that the backup controller is level. Use four self-tapping screws to secure the backup controller to the wall. Clean up any residual dust, then check that the backup controller is secure. Now, you can begin wiring. Remove the dust-proof plugs from all module BMS and power ports. Attach the included cable ties to the modules. You'll need to do this before continuing the installation. Route the positive DC power cables 
through the cable ties and insert the cables into the module's positive power ports. Route the negative DC power cables through the cable ties and insert the cables into the module's negative power ports. Route the RJ45 signal cables through the cable ties. Loosen the locking caps, insert the cables into the BMS ports, and finally rotate the locking caps to secure them. Route the ground cables through the cable ties. Secure the cables with screws. Just a reminder, the PE and RJ45 cables are secured with the same cable tie. Each DC power cable has its own cable tie. Cut off any cable tie excess. Repeat these steps to wire each module. Insert an ERJ45 connector with the 120 ohm terminating resistors through the bottom of the battery. Connect with the BMS port. Next, cover the negative DC power port with a female cap and cover the positive DC power port with a male cap. You're ready to connect the power module to the backup controller. You'll need an L1 cable, L2 cable, neutral cable, ground cable, and a signal cable. Make sure the signal cable is the appropriate length. First, remove the wiring compartment cover from the right side of the power module. Rotate the inner rings to remove the stoppers from the compartment cover. Attach conduit fittings to the compartment cover's inlets. Take a moment to prepare the AC power cables. Strip 18 millimeters of insulation. Connect the ground, neutral, L1 and L2 cables to the power module. Connect the signal cable to the PCSCOM1 port. Put the compartment cover back on. Place a breaker on the rail labeled Power Module 1 and secure the breaker with screws. Note that your breaker location may differ depending on your location and needs. Connect the L1 and L2 cables to the breaker for Power Module 1. Install the neutral and ground cables to their respective wiring bars. Plug the ERJ45 connector into the COMPCS port in the wiring compartment. PV wirings. Backup loads wiring. Non-backup loads wiring. Our next step in the installation depends on how you use your backup controller. If it's the main service entrance, follow these steps. Install the neutral ground bonding jumper to the backup controller. Make sure to remove the jumper from the panel downstream. Mount a main breaker onto the backup controller. Secure the main breaker with one M4 screw and two hex nuts. Connect the L1, L2, neutral, and ground cables respectively. Make sure the ground cable is connected to a ground anchor. And then, mount the wire sleeve terminals on the ends of the CT's cables and install the terminal block. Orient the arrow on the current transformers toward the cable entry. Plug the terminal block connector into the socket labeled Grid CT. If your backup controller isn't your main service entrance, the main breaker is inside of the main panel. We need to connect the backup controller to the main panel first, and then go through the power meter to the grid. Connect the L1, L2, neutral, and ground cables respectively. In this instance, the ground cable doesn't require a ground neutral bonding strap. Now, it's time for you to connect your system to the internet. You can connect via Ethernet, Wi-Fi, or a mobile dongle. If you'd like to use 4G data, you can purchase a mobile dongle to do so. To plug in the mobile dongle, take off the backup controller cover and look for a port on top. Remove the breaker plates as needed and reinstall the inner panel to the backup controller. Use the seven included black screws to secure it. Reinstall the backup controller door. Install the battery side covers, starting with the bottom and moving up. 
align the side cover clips with the grooves at the bottom of the battery. Push the side covers down to click into place. Install the side covers to the power module. Align the side cover clips with the power module groves. Push the covers down to click into place. Fasten the black M4 10mm screws on top. Attach the rubber separator to the right side cover slot. Finally, take off the screen protection film. Your installation of Anchor Solex X1 is now complete. Anchor Solex. Live in power.